So if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about joining an agency to sell insurance and pursuing an insurance sales career. But the reason I'm putting this video together is to talk about the realities of selling insurance and the things that frankly, most agency owners will not tell you. So what I'm gonna be doing is going through in deep detail the uh, underbelly of the insurance sales business with the goal of helping you decide truly if the uh, career or business of selling insurance truly is for you so that you can make that decision for yourself if it's a good fit like it is for me or if something else might be a better idea. Greetings and salutations. My name is David Duford. I own DeFord Insurance Group. I do train agents nationally to sell final expense, Medicare, annuities, and ACA in person and over the phone. If you'd like to learn more, davidduford.com forward slash FAQ is the place to go. So uh, the reason I'm putting this together is because so many people get attracted to the insurance sales career uh, with the money, the opportunity, the freedom that it provides, but don't realize they're being uh, induced by usually very good salespeople that know exactly uh, what needles to turn and what things to say to get you all excited, but without telling you the back or the backstory or the bad side of the business. I've been in the insurance business for 10 plus years now. I recruit nationally, like I mentioned uh, a moment ago. And the truth is the insurance sales career business is not for everybody. I think you should make this decision from a position of power and knowledge and of due diligence, not one of ignorance, because it can cost you dear in the amount of time, emotional turmoil, and all of that if you go, jump too quick in without doing the prerequisite and necessary due diligence. So we're gonna jump right into a list of, uh, I think, uh, uh, of things, the agencies out there, most of them won't tell you that you're gonna find out today that should help you, again, see the truth of this business. And then also I'm gonna provide you some guidance, some direction, on how to avoid some of these problems uh, that manifest in the insurance business. Number one, bottom line, if there's one big problem with selling insurance is that it's more about recruiting than selling. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to embark on in the insurance sales business is joining an MLM usually three out of four times. So what I mean by that is most of the business of insurance sales is MLM cultural based. When I say culturally based, it means that the MLMs out there are more about getting you to recruit people, not sell successfully, and then get into the whole cultural vibe that comes with MLM, the conspicuous consumerism, the constant Kool-Aid and rah-rah drinking, the cult-like atmosphere. Uh, again, they'll say that they're not a cult or they'll say this or that everything's an MLM. Uh, but the truth is, is that that's what you're going to run into the vast majority of the time. And why is that a problem? Because the people that run MLMs and most of these agencies in the insurance business are MLMs, don't necessarily want you to know the truth and the facts behind the business. They want you to believe in this vision this experience that their so-called agency can provide. And we would call that in a sense a sleight of hand like in magic. The sleight of hand is you do one thing to distract the attention of the audience while the other hand does something else. And that's what a lot of these agency business models are based off of. They come off as smooth operators, as some seemingly honest and transparent, but many of them on the uh, other side have a purposeful system set up to basically take as much as possible with very little in return. So understand as you get into this business, be very wary of the MLM culture. Number two, it's all hat, no cattle when it comes to entrepreneurship. Again, one of the sales pitches that a lot of these insurance MLMs and agencies pitch is this idea of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is in, everybody wants to do their own thing, run their own business, uh, get the money potential that comes from it. But what a lot of people don't understand is there's a lot of these gotcha clauses and issues with relationships with these agencies that prevent true business ownership from actually coming to fruition. For example, a couple of things that are common in the insurance business is the question of who owns your clients. 
You should, as an entrepreneur and business owner, own your own clients. What that means is that you own the cash flows and the residual income from it, and you can continually do business with them over time. But a lot of these agencies contractually make those clients theirs or prevent you from communicating with those clients if you change business relationships. And all of this is to say it is a business preventative step to prevent you from running business like you see fit based off of the terms in which you've acquired said business. It is not entrepreneurial. It is fake. Also, other things that happens, uh, micromanagement, adult babysitting. A lot of people like insurance sales because it allows you to run your own business. But what many people realize, especially with these insurance MLMs, is that they're put in a position of being micromanaged and babysat. They're called every day to show up to mandatory meetings that if they don't, they'll be in trouble. They're called to toe the line and do the rah-rah thing. And they're babysat to tell them their uplines and managers what they've written today and made to feel bad if they don't do it. This is not what you find in a real business. This is what you find in an employment situation. So the point of me saying this is that business-wise, a lot of the time, the benefits you get from being entrepreneurial, the things you'd like to see, you don't actually get in the insurance sales space. Number three, agencies make money on you even if you don't make sales. So a little bit of an explanation here. You may be wondering, well, how do agencies make money? What's in it for them to bring you on, recruit you to help you be successful? Well, in my business and most agencies as well, we make what's called an override. That is a small commission above your commission levels. And it's in that scaling up of recruiting a lot of agents and training them well, hopefully, that you make a lot of money and make agency building a lucrative business. But what a lot of these MLM agencies have begun to do is turn the tides. They've realized that they can make money, not just on you producing, but also on you doing other things beyond producing that doesn't require you to produce so that the agency can win even if you don't sell a thing, which stands in contrast, I think, with the true principles of a good agency. Just a couple of examples here. Uh, There are big time MLM agencies that charge a joining fee or a desk fee to get started. Uh, Before you even get your license, they're making money off you right away. There are organizations that charge for training I've always thought that was preposterous because in a job or a business, you don't pay to get trade. It's part of the uh, learning process if you're going to be successful. It comes with the territory at no additional expense. And then number three, the biggest thing that's a problem with a lot of these MLM agencies out there is that they buy leads for pennies on the dollar and then upsell them to such a huge extent that it becomes a huge cash cow operation to sell leads to the agent and then make a substantial profit on them. Right now, there is a class action lawsuit with probably one of the biggest life insurance MLMs out there. And again, you're innocent until proven guilty in our legal system. But what this uh, this lawsuit allegates is that this organization is making three to four million dollars every single week off the sale of leads, which is really just data that's acquired for pennies on the dollar, then resold for eight to $10 a piece, and then resold a multiple of times so that it's not just one lead that goes to one agent, it goes to multiple agents. So they may make a 50 cent investment for a $50 return on just one lead. They sell thousands upon thousands of those really a day. So think about the money that's earned off of that, but think about truly the impact it has on the relationship with that agency. You're in a position where you're being treated as a uh, as a user, but not as an equal partner because that agency, that MLM selling you those crappy leads, and they're pretty crappy, um, wins even if you don't. You go work them, you realize they're trash, they're garbage, and now you're in a position of being uh, flustered out of the business like truly 90% plus of the new agents that come in. So again, That's the thing you got to be concerned with is that these agencies that are out there many times will make money on you even if you don't make money off of sales. And that, in in, in a big picture, really is the problem with the mindset and the perspective that these agencies have is they're willing to use you for their own ends um, without satisfying the goals that you have, which is making sales. Other things that a lot of these agencies will not tell you that are huge problems And uh, again, this is a reality of the business. Uh, Number one are chargebacks. 
So chargebacks, I mean, when you make an insurance sale, your advanced commission, advance is a loan. It typically is nine months of the 12 months in most life insurance business, can vary for other products. But the point is if your client cancels before that lapse is set or that uh, advance is satisfied, you owe back part of the money that you were paid. And if you don't make it back, then you get terminated. You end up in what's called vector, and that prevents you from getting appointed with any other carriers. So again, chargebacks happen. It's not something that is uh, you know, uh, impossible. Most agents get them, even the best ones. They have to be managed and reduced, but they are something that's part of this business that a lot of the MLMs out there just simply won't talk about. They'll uh, tell you how much money you're gonna make, but what if you write a bunch of bad business and Mildred lapses are planned? Well, you gotta pay that back. So again, that's the reality of it. If you're not prepared for it or you're trained on how to manage it, it could be a big, a big problem. Now, related to that is the debt roll-ups. Now, this is a big deal that nobody wants to talk about. And this is if you're pushed into building an agency, which is a fine thing to do for some people, not everybody. But one of the things that you as an agency owner now take the responsibility for is co-signing on all of your downline's debt and that if they charge back lapse and they don't pay back that lapse, that money now becomes your responsibility to pay. Now you might be thinking, well, this can't be a big deal, but it really is. I have seen circumstances in the last year or two where one agency from, one guy recruited a couple of agents at a big insurance MLM. They were interviewing with me to join and he had a $70,000 roll up from one agent. Uh, he was essentially eliminated from the business because he couldn't pay it back. I've heard of other agents getting $5,000, $10,000 roll-ups um, for agents who are just doing a bad job that aren't managing. I've heard of a quarter million dollar roll-up. There's one agent that did a huge roll-up to a partner carrier that we have that uh, we successfully got uh, litigated against. And he's now, it may be out by now, but he had uh, eight years in the slammer uh, in Illinois because he had owed $350,000, defrauded a lot of people. So my point is, Getting into the insurance business, if you build, like a lot of these MLMs want you to, you're co-signing a lot of people's debt, a lot of strangers' debt. Are they actually going to do what they say they're going to do? Or are they going to be deadbeats? Eh, you don't know. So understand that's kind of what you're getting into when you get into the agency building space. And you want to take that into uh, appreciation. Um, also, um, bottom line, the other thing too is that this is an emotional roller coaster. This isn't like easy money where you just go out there and pick up bags of cash on the sidewalk and you're now making six figures a year and you know sitting around in a Porsche or whatever. Like it's hard work. It's emotional. There are going to be weeks where everybody's your best friend handing you their checkbooks, and there's next weeks where nobody does. It is a roller coaster up and down. It is not work for everybody. Uh, in other words, this is not the kind of work that works for everybody. Some people love it. Other people despise it. And it is something that truly, uh, as in all performance-based business models, the minority, 20% pull in the vast majority of the production, meaning you got to be a top 20% person or better to have any kind of semblance of a chance to do well. And again, that's not what you're told a lot of the time, but that truly is the case. Now, with all this said, the one thing I'll add here as we round this out, I still think for the right person who has done their due diligence that likes selling, likes people, insurance sales can be one of the most rewarding and lucrative businesses when it comes to helping, truly helping people with a very good product that you can sleep well at night knowing that you've helped uh, and create, in many cases, a lifestyle where much of your money can be passively generated. So why is this the case that this is still a good idea, even though there's some unseemingly issue, unseeming issues about it? Well, first of all, a couple of things here I would suggest to you if you if if you know you think insurance might be still for you after kind of what we talked about. Number one, much of the problems that we talked about earlier can be mitigated and managed taking the time if you find the right agency. In other words, if you find a good agency, chargebacks, debt roll-ups, you can learn how to deal with that. If you understand that agency building is something that you don't have to pop into right away, but you can get to later, it's, it's, it's something you can avoid entirely, almost entirely. Um, if you join a good agency that's devoted to sales training, they're devoted to helping you become a producer, you can avoid a lot of these issues like some MLM who's more concerned about you recruiting other people to recruit, uh, to sell, get sold junk leads or agencies like mine that don't make a dime off of uh, referring of leads. I only make money when an agent makes money, right? So there are ways to get around this stuff. Um, 
You just got to do your due diligence. That's kind of where I'll leave this. This business is fantastic. I'm thankful I ran across this accidentally. I did not want to sell insurance. It was the last thing I ever wanted to do. But circumstances were what they were. And I thankfully stumbled across it. And I had my failure points early on in life. I had some problematic relationships with agencies at some points in my career. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm thankful for being in it and what I was able to achieve and what I continually am able to achieve. And I think it's something for the person who understands the truth of the business, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you can accept the bad and the ugly and avoid the ugly, really, and just find an organization that's good for you, a lot of these problems can be mitigated. And again, I'm an agency that recruits nationally. If you like the idea of selling final expense, Medicare annuities, or ACA, uh, there are plenty of other great agencies out there that do something similar to what we do. If you'd like to learn more about how we operate, go to davidduford.com forward slash FAQ. You'll learn lots of information about how my agency works, who it's a good fit for, and who it's not a good fit for, so that you can determine if what we do is, is good for you. So thanks for watching, y'all, and hope you have a good day.